when we talk about collaboration in the 21st century, we forget that collaboration between disparate levels of development can be no, can provide no solutions to anybody and for anybody. Take, for example, the fact that a large part of manufacturing activity of the world shifted to China. The reason for that was simple, that in a global economy, the consumer wanted the best quality product at the lowest possible price. And in a globalized world, enterprises realized that they will have to access workforce which will provide leverage for the production of goods at the lowest possible prices, but goods of great quality. And so multinationals and great enterprises moved into China to, prove, to produce and manufacture the products, products that the developed world needed and satisfy the needs of the consumer. This is the impact of globalization. A similar pattern emerged in the service sector. You would, surprise, you would be surprised to know that India as an economy is largely a service economy, despite the fact that more than 60% of our people live in the rural areas. 54% of our GDP is provided by the service sector. Whereas a very small percentage of our population which produces those services are living in the urban areas and a large section of, the, of our community lives in the rural areas who do not contribute to the GDP at all. The reason why that happened was that in a globalized world, Enterprises realize that you will have to access human resource wherever it's available. Relatively less costly human resource. Leverage that human resource to provide a service which is of quality, but which is relatively less expensive, so that the consumer can be satisfied. So the situs of manufacturing shifted to China, and the situs of services shifted to India and several other relatively service-oriented economies. And I dare say that the proposition that I want to lay before you is that this is what is going to happen in the knowledge sector. What happened in manufacturing, what happened in services is going to happen in the knowledge sector. Creativity will be the bedrock from which solutions will emerge. But those solutions will come where the human resource is located, not where the human resource is not located. And enterprises will move towards areas where you have quality human resource, which is relatively less costly and which can be leveraged for global good. That's the fundamental proposition that I want to place before you. Let's take, for example, the question of climate change and global warming. Now, you can have a product in the developed world which deals with, say, energy and which provides a solution for the developed economy alternative sources of energy. But if you were to actually use that product in a country, say, India, you will find that that product is neither accessible nor affordable to the large population of India. In other words, the solutions provided by the, developed, by, by, by the knowledge economy in the developed world are neither accessible nor affordable to where the large populations of the world are residing and therefore provides no real solution to the global community. But if you were to produce a product in India, 
in the context of alternative sources of energy, which is both affordable and accessible, then it's a solution for the global community. Because for that product, the market is not just India, but the global market. And therefore, naturally, there will be a movement away from providing solutions for the developed world to where the problems need to be tackled. In other words, the solutions would be found at the situs of the problem, not away from the problem. That is what's going to happen to the knowledge economy in the 21st century. And therefore, it's important for us to understand how we can leverage that for global good. Having stated that background, I would now like to put before you what the roadmap should be for the global community. And I thank the organizers of this forum to have, been, to have given me this opportunity and to share my thoughts with your highness. Take a country like India, or for that matter anywhere in the world. The real creativity and wealth, as your highness mentioned, and if you look at the balance sheet of any company today or any enterprise today, you will realize that the real wealth of enterprises are no longer the acquisition of physical assets. It's no longer the acquisition of tangible assets, assets that you can touch, assets that you can feel, your bank balances. On the contrary, real wealth of an enterprise today is determined by the acquisition of intangible assets. And so you ask yourself a question when you're looking at the balance sheet of an enterprise, how many patents does this enterprise have? What is the future potential of patents, of creativity? 